Let's move on to creating a sample space. This is a question that I get a lot from students asking, where do I even start with this? And so I like to begin with a pretty simple explanation or example of how this could work. And so what I've got up here is, uh, is the sum of two six-sided dice. So imagine I'm rolling dice in a game, six-sided, I'm adding the result together, and we're gonna create a sample space, which is all of the possible outcomes that could happen from rolling to six-sided dice. So what I'm gonna do is start with think in your mind what the possible sum is. So the, the minimum and the maximum is probably the easiest to start with. So minimally, what can I roll? And on, in the case of two six-sided die, I can roll a number one on die one and a number one on die two. So the minimum I can get is a two. The max I can get is two sixes, boxcars, right? So I can get a 12. So we'll start entering those to begin with. So uh, a two, all right, and then uh, I can enter, I can get down to a 12, but before I get down there for a minute, let's think about everything in between, right? So I can do a three, a four, a five, and so on, and I'm just gonna take this and drag it down until I get to 12. All right, so those are all of the possible outcomes for uh, a dice roll with, uh, with two dice, okay? Now, Let's think about the frequency. This is another place where people get a little bit hung up and they, they sometimes don't think enough about what, are, what possible outcomes there could be based on the two dice or any other given problem that you're trying to create a sample space for. Um, in this case, the, the two can only come up one way. You have to roll snake eyes, okay? So that's pretty easy. Uh, the, the three, however, this is where we start adding in a little bit more thinking to it. Uh, on the first die, I can roll a one. On the second die, I can roll a two. Another way to do it is on the first die, roll a two, and on the second die, roll a one. So there's two possible ways that can happen. A four, I can roll a two and a two. I can roll a three and a one, or I can roll a one and a three. So there's three different ways to do that. And this, this progresses as you think through um, the problems here uh, until you get to uh, until you get to seven and then it starts to work its way back down again uh, until you get to six, six and six, 12. You can only uh, roll that one way. All right, now we need to do the relative frequency and to do that we need to sum up the frequencies. Use the auto sum function. There's 36 of them. I like to write sum in here to remind myself that that's what this is. And then the relative frequency is the, uh, we'll do equals to create a formula here. Uh, the frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies, which is 36, and I'm going to put that in as an absolute reference, so dollar signs, in front of the column and row. Okay, and then we're just going to copy this down, and uh, we get the relative frequency. I'm going to select the whole whole set of data again, leave that last column, that last row blank, and auto sum, and it should sum to one. That makes total sense. If it's less than one or greater than one, I did something wrong. All right, so there I've created my sample space. I have all possible outcomes. It's collectively exhaustive. Uh, they're mutually exclusive. There's no outcomes or frequencies in a bucket that shouldn't be in a bucket or a bin. And I've calculated the relative frequency. Great. Now, let's, let's actually think about how this would really work. So let's sort of, sort of start with a proof that, that this is the right way to do it. And one way we can do that is we can say, uh, I can roll a bunch of ones and there's uh, of we'll just make an entry for six of them. And maybe I might do this a little bit backwards and I've done it before. Um, I can roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and then a six, okay? I'm gonna copy that down uh, six times. And, and actually, before I do that, I'll talk about why I'm gonna do that because I can roll uh, a one through a six. And then on the second die, I'm just gonna say, what happens if the second die was always a one? And then what if it was always a two, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate this down six times. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm just gonna create my sets here where I've just uh, created three. Now this works really well as a proof for a small uh, set of data. This doesn't work really well for a larger set and we can sort of prove this out uh, in a different way if we wanted to. But visually, I want you to see what it is we're doing and that will probably hammer at home for you. All right, so now I have all the possible uh, rolls on one, all the possible rolls on die two, and then we're just going to sum them both up. So roll one plus roll two, all right? And then we'll go ahead and hit the corner and copy that all the way down. 
All right. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to use the magic of Excel here, where I'm going to take this whole entire set and I'm going to copy it over and I'm going to paste it into the outcome here. But we're going to do a special paste. We're going to right click and choose paste values because this was a formula and I want to paste the value, not the formula. Then we're going to select that whole set again. This time we're going to go over to the data ribbon and we're going to choose remove duplicates. And I don't want to expand the selection. I want to continue with what I selected. I selected the right thing and click OK. And it will remove all the duplicate entries in here. All right. By doing that, I have a unique list of all of the outcomes. Now I can go back and I can calculate the frequency that each of those occurred in my entire set. All right. And to do that, we're going to use the count if function. So I'll say equals count if, and I have to give it a range. So I'm going to give it the range of all of the possible outcomes that I created. All right. And then I'm going to do comma. And it, in the if portion of it, the criteria is I want to count it if it equals the row that I'm in, a number two. I'm going to count it if it's a three and a four, so on later. There's one other change I have to make, and that's that I want the reference to the sum to be an absolute reference. I don't want it to move as I copy down the formula in this cell to the bottom. All right, so I've got one possibility for two, two ways to make a three, three ways to make a four, and so on. And that matches what I initially mentally thought would happen. So I know that I'm correct here in my thinking. Now, let's think about this from a probabilistic standpoint. Let's see if I can prove this out uh, with just random dice rolls, okay? And we can simulate that in Excel as well. So what I've done is I've created a trial set here from one to 100. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll two dice a hundred times. And I'm going to use a function in Excel called rand between. Right? And I'm going to say that I want the bottom, the lowest number to be a one and the highest number to be a six. That's for the first die. And then I'm just going to copy that over, control C, control V for the second one. Now I've already pre-calculated the sum here. It's just the sum of die one plus die two. Okay? All I'm going to do is drag and highlight cells in M and N and drag them all the way down to the 100th trial. And then I've got all the sums here automatically for me. This would have been easy to do if I didn't want to show it on camera. It's super quick. Now, I know all of the outcomes. I've calculated them before, both mentally and proved that it's correct. So now I've got my COUNTIF function over here again where I'm, I'm counting how many times each one of those happens, and then I'm summing the frequency, and I know this should be 100 because I'm running 100 trials, right? If I have under or over that amount, I didn't sum it correctly or something went wrong, and then I'm calculating the relative frequency again, which is how many times that particular sum appeared divided by the number of trials that I have. Now, I'm doing this because I want to prove if I just randomly create dice rolls or die rolls, uh, does the frequency come up correct? And let's go ahead and I'm going to hit F9 and F9 recalculates. So it reruns the, uh, the randomness of the data. So I can see there didn't produce any, any ones. Remember, 100 dice and didn't get snake eyes one time. There I got it four times. All right. So 4%. 5%, 2%, and that's close to what the actual number is. It's 2.78%. Right, and I can run it 2% again, 1%, and so on. Now, let's look at the most frequent one. 16.67% of the time, I roll a 7. So here is 18 times, 7 times, 17, 11, 14, 14, 17. Okay, so I can quickly iterate through and just see probabilistically, does this make sense? Is this what I, what I would get if I were really doing it? Again, proving it out. Always got to sum to 100 because I had 100 trials. If I had 1,000 trials, it would sum to 1,000. And then my relative frequency would have to always sum to 1 or I've got something wrong with my calculation on my frequencies. So really quickly, we went through creating a sample space showing that we actually created it correctly, producing trials based on just random dice rolls, and then showing the frequency there compared to what we, we, we can show empirically the frequency is, uh, or should be anyway, <laughs> if everything went, uh, ran fairly uh, and the number came up the way that it should. Okay, that's it for this particular uh, lesson. We're going to go on to normal distributions and binomial distributions in the next set of videos.